Hey guys, it's me, Micah, and this is the uh, Homestead Bandwagon. Um, starting a new, well not starting, but officially naming a, a series I'm going to be calling, if you're ready for this, a lot of thinking went into this with the, uh, the marketing team. We're calling this segment, From China, with Love. Still working on the title animations. Um, so... This is homesteading stuff that you get from China is what we're looking at. And I guess uh, to give a little background here, um, a lot of stuff's made in China, but we all like to, to, to beat our chests and pretend that all we're buying is good old fashioned made in the USA or made in Canada, or I, I never see anything made in Europe out here in the States, but made in Europe stuff, you know, good hard working folks, bootstrapping, making good quality equipment that'll never let you down. It's not that cheap junk, you know, from whatever country you're getting your cheap junk from. And uh, frankly, that's kind of disingenuous, I guess. Um, a majority of what we have, at least here in the States, is made in China. You know, I could reach across this tool rack and there's a couple things made in the USA. You know, this is made in uh, South uh, Africa. This is made in... Well, that's made in India. Um, a couple of these other shackles are made in China. You know, you, that's just what's going on. We are not a, you know, manufacturing all these small bits and pieces in the U.S. And a lot of what you buy for your farm or homestead is made in China. That's just how life works. Um, so I think China gets a bad rap, and that's fair sometimes. Uh, if you want to buy cheap garbage. Um, the Made in China brand marker, not brand marker, the Made in China sticker will help you go in that direction, but you're also spending pennies on the dollar to buy that stuff. Um, so, you know, if you got a tool that you're not going to use much, um, or if you got a tool that you need to save money on, because, you know, living on acreage is just expensive. It's a, it's the past, fastest way to go broke I know of. Um, you know, you save a couple bucks. And then some stuff just isn't made in the U.S., um, for example, a lot of bat battery powered stuff, the batteries aren't made in the US. Um, and if they are, they're made of foreign components. Um, so that's what we're getting at here is let's, let's actually dive into stuff that's made in China and see what it is, see if it's any good. Um, there was a little notification up here that this is a, a paid um, uh, or sponsored content. Uh, the reason is because Saker, who sent me a grease fitting uh, coupler, a while ago, where'd it go? Right here. It's the Saker grease fitting coupler. Um, this thing's built like a tank. Really nice little piece of equipment. Um, unfortunately, it would not fit into the re recessed grease zerks on the tractor, so we don't use it too much, but really cool little piece of equipment. They told me they were actually redesigning it to make it a little slimmer, hopefully, so it'll work on those recessed, recessed zerks. Uh, the recessed zerks they're used to are larger in diameter than the ones here. So something interesting to look at. Um, anyway, they said, hey, we got this uh, piece of equipment. Do you want to try it out? I said, yes. And they sent it to me to, for free. So that is a, that is a paid sponsorship. Um, if you go buy one from smartsaker.com, I don't get a nickel back. Maybe I should have talked them into that, you know, do one of those YouTube things where I get 5% back and you get your little special coupon code, but whatever. Um, the thing they had is this, the Saker Mini, Mini Electric Chainsaw. We've got a lot of glare here. Saker Mini Electric Chainsaw. So this is fresh in the box. I have not opened this box yet. They sent this to my front door and... This is just something you can buy online. Uh, what I like about this is this is a, a pruning chainsaw. Um, we do a lot of pruning out here, a lot of limbing. But let's uh, open this box up and see what this thing looks like um, and kind of go through it. Now this type of saw was uh, kind of popularized, I believe by still, I work for a still dealer. Uh, it's called the GTA 26. Um, I was going to do a comparison between the two, but the GTA 26 has been on back order for like a year and a half. They can't get them. And guess where the GTA 26 is made? Uh, Bosch also makes something like this. It's called the Bosch. I don't know what it's called because I don't buy Bosch stuff. Um, 
guess where that's made? And then Milwaukee, they also make one of their, I think it's one of their fuel tools. And I tell you what, I bought a, De a lot of DeWalt stuff. Guess where a lot of that's made? Um, I bought all my DeWalt stuff and then realized I really liked Milwaukee, but there ain't no turning back now, baby. Um, you know, once you commit to a battery system, you're in deep. Anyway, Milwaukee makes something called the Milwaukee Hatchet. So this is the Saker, Saker Mini Electric Chainsaw, though. Um, so it's, yeah, just call it a copy of those things. And the price point is way lower. So uh, first, let's, uh, let's, let's open this thing up uh, and look inside. Says this is a box says this is a 20 volt max in the North America and Europe 18 volt max. I don't know if there's rules about that or what that is. It says a chainsaw speed of 70 780 revolutions per minute and a 240 millimeter guide bar. Okay, should we save the uh, save the cardboard and just destroy it? have to destroy it if it doesn't come off in a sec. Okay, plastic case. It's got recycled too. I don't know if that means it's recycled or it can be recycled. Oh, look at that. It tells you all the stuff you got. Mini electric chainsaw from Saker. Let's see how this thing opens. This is a, a, a decent little case. You know, these Clips seem okay. All right, so we've got a manual. We've got a battery. Now this looks a lot like the DeWalt battery. Another battery. Wow, oh, they gave us two batteries. That's kind of cool. We'll plug in for a charger. Just plug these. Oh, so that just plugs in there. And that plugs into the wall so you don't have a charger that this slides into. Phillips head screwdriver. And that guy, a little wrench. And the chainsaw itself. So this guy's got a hand guard. Battery goes in there. motor here it doesn't say it's brushless this does stick out the side maybe this is a brushed motor I don't know it's got notes on the back do not cut wood which is more than four inches do not overpress the machine when cutting wood when the machine is not used for a long time please fully charge it then store it thank you and this uh, kind of like the steel has another caution not used by miners, M-I-N-O-R-S. So if you work in the coal mine, you can use this. Do not touch the guide plate with any limb. I think they mean these limbs, not tree limbs. It is forbidden to contact any part of the human body with the chain under the working state. Otherwise, it will be injured. Sounds good. Okay, so we got a little guard here. Um, Still has one of these on, on their GTA 26, which I don't love because if you want to make a relief cut on a limb, you would cut with this part, and then you'd come down and cut the top, and then that branch, when it falls, it doesn't tear. Um, you can look up, look up proper pruning techniques, but this does have a little thing here, and they give you the tool, so you could remove this guide if you wanted to. Sounds dangerous. 
it's pretty light. But yeah, the reason this is here is because if you're pruning, especially one-handed, so the, the still, I talk about the still a lot. So this guy you can use right-handed. There's a safety button to push. See this button? You have to push that and then, then you can pull your trigger. So yeah, what do you push the button? You can then push down the trigger. If you try to just push the trigger, it's locked. So this is a safety. Um, you can only use this, you can't use this left hand. Well, you could, you could press the button left-handed yeah. And then, nope, the trigger lock must be depressed while pulling. Oh no, you can do it. You can press the button first and then push down the trigger. So you could use this left handed, it would just be a pain. So the steel, they have a, a guard here, so you're actually supposed to cut two handed with the steel, which seems a little sketchy because, but you have a guard. This one, they're saying, hey man, just one hand it, brandish it about, I guess. Um, so the idea of having this guard on here is this is the danger zone on any saw. So if you're chopping something and you hit this with an object that, you know, is in place, like a branch, um, it'll shoot the whole saw backwards and sometimes shoot it up towards your face, which is why on, on chainsaws they have a, a guard here to protect you from getting whacked. Um, so that's what this guard does. It's supposed to like protect you in case of kickback, in theory, um, and also to discourage you from using this top tip. This is the danger area. You're supposed to just cut with the bottom. It's much safer. It'll just shoot back instead of shooting up and back. So, okay. Um, so how does it feel? Um, it feels like it's pretty solid, pretty weighty. Um, this seems to be a common chain. This is called a quarter, quarter Pico chain, I believe. Um, there's no place to oil this, which concerns me. Uh, the casting looks okay. There's, there's seams here that are a little rough. Um, you know, you can remove certain stuff with that screwdriver they gave gave you. Other ones have these different, I can't really see, these different heads. So that's stuff you're not supposed to take apart. But it feels okay in the hand. Um, we're gonna, I wonder if these, these batteries don't have a charge indicator on them. Let's see if they have any juice. Ready? Holy smokes, right out of the box. That's got juice to it. Well, uh, boy, I uh, guess we'll go cut something.
can't really don't have a good grip you know don't give this to gam gams who you know has problems you know ladling the the gravy at thanksgiving dinner don't don't buy her one of these how did this thing do um it did pretty well uh cut a bunch of branches with it it did great I cut some two by fours, I cut some two by sixes, I cut even some treated number one four by fours, um, which bogged it down a little ways, but it cut through them. Um, I tried doing some schedule 40 PVC, eh, that didn't do so good, um, but cuts through wood really good. Um, I didn't have a turkey to cut, but I'm sure it would cut through a turkey as well. Um, whatever you're cutting, you wanna make sure you're either holding onto that branch while you're cutting, um, or the end of what you're cutting is secured and in place uh, because when you get vibration, the saw did get a little jumpy. Um, I had no problem operating it with one hand, um, even though it did hop a little bit. Um, that's why a guard like that is there, is because if this thing pops on you, at least that's there to hit your face instead of the, instead of the chain. Um, Anjum tried it, which was amazing. She usually won't try power tools. And she wanted something here to kind of help her guide it, but she settled with just two-handing it and cut through a pretty big chunk, a couple big chunks of butterfly bush um, readily. Um, when it was moving a lot, it, it kind of jumped. So, you know, if we secured that branch and then cut it, it cut through like a, like a dream. Um, so great little tool. Um, I could see carrying this with me when I'm working out on the tractor. Um, a lot of times I've got branches hitting you in the face and stuff and you know, going back and forth through an area. It'd be real nice to be able to just get up there, grab that branch and <laughs> chop right through it and move on with your life. So this is a great tool for something like that uh, to have in your hunting kit, to have uh, on your quad when you're out, you know, blazing trails, uh, have on your motorcycle, um, you know, maybe have it in the back of the truck if you're, if you're camping, you know, something like that. This is actually a pretty cool little thing to have. Um, you know, you're not going to use it for construction, doing a hundred cuts one after another. Um, I did kind of stress test it a little bit and just held down the, the, uh, the, the, the throttle and ran it wide open. Um, and it lasted for more than 10 minutes, more than you could ever ask for. Uh, the website says you can get four hours of runtime with mild use. I don't know what that means. So it, Never ran out of batteries on me until I really stressed it and like did cut after cut after cut through lumber. Um, and so I, you know, when you're doing those really hard cuts, which bogging down, then it, it did run out of, run out of steam doing that. Um, but it did everything you asked for. I mean, nobody's going to cut lumber with one of these. They're going to be out there cutting branches. That's what it's for. So it does a good job of that. Um, I did kind of mess up the bar a little bit, probably when I was cutting that schedule 40. Uh, this is a pretty common chain. This is called a, a quarter pico chain. You can replace these. Um, the thing I did find is that the chain likes to get start getting loose. Like I had just sharpened this chain, and I'll show you why. This is my only complaint about this thing. Um, so I'm going to take off the nut on the side here, which I've gotten okay at doing. We got that off we take this side plate off and so here's your sprocket here's your tensioner down here so we've got to lift this guard up take everything out so this tensioner um, I'm not in love with if you can see this it's kind of just it has nothing to hold it in it kind of just moves um, so that's always you'll think you have it tight and then it'll move on you or it'll move on you backwards so that's not good. Um, it's supposed to sit down in this slot right here. It doesn't quite do that. Um, and also the head of this thing is a little soft. So when you're getting in here to tension, see as you turn this, it moves this little tensioner, uh, whatever you call that doohickey, up and down. Um, I had a couple times where I slipped and I'm starting to strip out this head already. I would replace this with a harder bolt uh, from the hardware store for a dollar and maybe try putting a, a, a washer right behind the head just to help it hold in this channel here. Hope you can see this. I would put a washer behind this head to help it hold in this channel here and then go buy a harder screw 
at the hardware store. Any screw should do. Um, I just This is probably just a cheap screw. It does fine, but I have started stripping out the head a little bit with this screwdriver. Um, so that's the one one thing I'm not really in love with is that screw and this tensioner. It just, yeah, you see the back end pops up. Now when the, the bar is on here, it kind of holds it in, but eh, that's iffy. Um, so then putting this back on is the only other gripe I have, which I always gripe about putting chainsaw bars on anyway. But you've got to kind of wrestle with this little shield here when you're doing this. Um, and you're already wrestling with enough. And so I'm trying to get on here. And I'm not quite... Oop, there we go. Oops. So I'm going to have to loosen up this guy a little bit. Where'd the screwdriver go? I would also get a longer screwdriver if you don't already own one. Um, because trying to reach behind the bar with this screwdriver, the screwdriver is a little short. But it's nice that they gave you one. Lift up the guard. Put your bar and chain in there. And you got to kind of have three hands to do it. And then we need to try to locate that tensioner, which danced away at us. So we poke it back there with our finger. There we go. Now we're sitting in. Um, first thing I would do is hold that bar down and then reach back here with the screwdriver. See how your hand's touching the bar while you're trying to tension this? So we'll get some tension on there. Then put the side plate back on. Then get your bar nut on here. And just hand tight just to hold everything in place. And then we've got a little too much slack in the chain. Get in here and tighten the chain. Maybe a half turn. That's good. And then we'll tighten the bar nut back down. So it's not the worst after you practice it. But it's worse when you're trying to do it on camera. So that's nice and tight. Um, and then, yeah, when I run this thing for 10 minutes, oh, see, the tensioner moved. So we need to, need to tighten this back up again. So you would loosen your side. Eighth of a turn. Get your screwdriver in here. Give it another little spin or two until that chain is tighter and then you'll tighten this back down and that will tension the chain as well in theory okay I'll have to keep playing with that that's not bad it's not falling out of the bar okay so anyway yeah the tensioner system isn't the best but this is an occasional use tool it is what it is um, and then I would probably when you take that chain off Occasionally, um, I would put some bar oil in this bar, just pour some in, and then run it through with the chain. That'll make that chain last longer, cut better, um, and not run as hot. So that's it. Uh, the Saker uh, Mini Electric Chainsaw. Good little find. Way less money than the other stuff out there. Um, there are a lot of knockoffs to some of these pieces of equipment that sell for like 20 bucks and stuff. Those are scams. Don't buy into it. You know, this is reasonably priced online and you get a real product. So I think it's decent. Um, don't be a dummy like me and remove this guard when you're trying to deal with stuff in here because there's a spring in here and it comes out and it's a big pain. So just leave this on and deal with it. Maybe take a screwdriver or something and hold I don't know. Just deal with having the guard. That's all. Otherwise, nice little, nice little machine. The batteries take a couple hours to charge. Um, they work great. The charger is red when they're out of, out of juice, green when they're ready to go. So great little piece of kit. Um, if you're considering one, I think it's fine. Um, you know, it's not going to be professional use. This is an occasional use tool. Buy it for your auntie, buy it from your mom, buy it for your dad, you know, buy it for your husband, whatever. Feel free. It's a nice little, nice little thing to have in your kit. Um, something everybody doesn't have already. So there we go, Saker Mini Electric Chainsaw. Have a great day. Oof. Well, I, I guess maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. There's a spring in there, so I guess you'd have to, oh boy. That was the first time I tried that. Maybe that was a mistake.